You are Merle. <laughs> I love me. <laughs> Merle, when were you born? December 4th, 1928. 1928. Mm -hmm. Where were you born? Bellingham. Bellingham, Washington. Yep. I was born in the old hospital here. And so you've lived your whole life in Bellingham? Yes, I have. Wow. Yeah. Well, I've been to Alaska and, and uh, a few, few countries, but, uh, you know, we traveled later on when I was in my late 30s. Martha and I went. <laughs> Good. And so you, you grew up here, you were educated here? Uh, I quit school when I was in eighth grade, and uh, I went back to school and uh, when it was my late 30s and I got my GED and uh, I took a high school course and uh, that was, uh, I never needed it because <laughs> I, was, I was a logger and I worked in the woods, oh. following the buck and timber. And where did you work in the woods? In the Bellingham area? Uh, no, I worked in, um, let's see, it's, gee. Well, I, I worked, uh, yeah, I worked up at Deming and uh, different places, uh, in, in uh, up the highway, uh, Glacier, worked in Glacier. And then I worked in uh, southeast, uh, I can't think of the name of it. But uh, I worked a year, the last year I worked there, in 1950. That's when I quit logging. So w would you be sleeping at a logging cabin uh, with, the, with the guys, or? No, we, uh, there was uh, my fallen partner, him and I, we rented a little cabin right on the river. And uh, this was the last year we worked. Okay. And uh, uh, when, uh, Deer season came around, the boss came around and said, hey, we're going to shut her down and you guys go hunting. And I never went back, <laughs> but my partner did. He stayed with it all his life. So uh, that was the end of my logging. So you, in your life, you were a logger. What did you do after logging? Uh, oh my goodness, I had 30 some jobs, so uh, I cut them down to four or five jobs. I worked at uh, City of Seattle or City of Bellingham for uh, um, 30 years, mm -hmm. 20, 29 and a half years. And I went out six months early. And then I worked at the Fish House for six years, part-time. And uh, I did other small jobs. Uh, just to keep myself busy. And uh, so you've had varied careers. Various, yeah. I, w I had about thirty some jobs uh, in my life. <laughs> I started out when I was a kid. I'd go up the alley and see a pile of wood laying there, and I'd go in and ask if we needed they needed it piled up, and, and then for a dollar I'd go. Pile or wood, and I'd mow lawns and so uh, you could buy candy. Uh, yeah, so I could buy candy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you you were an entrepreneur. A what? An entrepreneur. You would make business happen. Well, that's that's right. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. So you've had two sweethearts in your life. Yes, I have, and uh, a blessed man. I was blessed twice. <laughs> I've had two good women. And Martha is, is your wife now? Martha, yeah. She's, she's my wife now. <laughs> I can't get rid of her. <laughs> you don't want to. No, she, no. she loves you. and No, she loves me. I, I know that. So Merle, um, your faith is a faith of a Christian. How did that happen? Uh... Well, I really knew about Christ when I was pretty young because I used to stand outside the church and listen to him singing, and uh, I really enjoyed that. And uh, But I didn't come to know the Lord till 
my first wife started to go into church and I started going with her and uh, Mission Covenant Church and uh, we went to there quite a long time and, and uh, she got to the point where every time they wanted somebody to do something in the church she was always volunteer and she kind of went to extremes and it kind of backed up on her seat. She just couldn't handle it after a while, so we quit going to that particular church. So. Anyhow, from then on, Martha and I, we've been going to different churches and uh, since we got married to her. Well, mostly good news. Well, good news, yeah. Mm. So, how do you know that Jesus loves you? Well, I talk to him every day. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. You read his word every day. I read his word practically every day. So he tells you he loves you. He certainly does. And uh, I got lots of, lots of back it up. <laughs> I've been so close to getting really hurt and so forth. And uh, the Lord has been with me all my life, even when I was small. And uh, like I used to r r run the power saws, and uh, they were a lot different in them days when I was running a saw. You'd hit a little piece of brush and it'd throw the saw over your head and mm. it'd wind up 30 feet behind you, and uh, stuff like that. And uh, fortunately, I got hurt a, few, a couple times. I got a log on my leg and uh, and uh, that kind of crippled me up for a few months. And I had some other small injuries, but nothing to get excited about. I don't know if anybody has been in the woods too long that didn't get hurt. <laughs> My brother got killed. A log fell off his truck and crushed him. And uh, my dad, he got a broken neck out of it. And all my relatives, somehow or another, got hurt in the woods. Hmm. So that and was you, one reason I quit. And you were, you had a serious car accident, too. You were thrown out of a car. Well, out I, was of a thrown car. Out, I was thrown out of a car, yeah, yeah. And I forgot all about that. <laughs> you want to hear about it? Sure. Okay. Well, we were, we'd been fishing all day, and it was in the evening, and we started up over a hill. And we followed a car all the way from Mount Vernon. And uh, all of a sudden he turned around to go around his car. We were right on the top of the hill. And I don't know why he did that. But the car went into a spin and it threw me out of the door. And when I hit the door and it opened up and I went flying out of the, and I, I was at the center line of the road and I flew clear across the highway across the shoulder of the road at about 15 feet, crossed a great big ditch, and I landed on my back. And uh, all of a sudden, here come that car door right alongside of me, and it just slammed in the, and it pushed it back up on the, the road again. And about that time, there was a state patrolman. He must have been sitting there close somewhere, because he was right there. And I hadn't moved yet. He said, you're okay? And I said, yeah, I think so. I can get out of here. I was muddy, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, got out of there, and I said, no, I'm fine. So 30-some years later, it showed up my back, and it, the, uh, there was three uh, vertebrae. vertebrae that were crooked, that went back crooked. Yes. And it never bothered me for 30-some years. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I still got I still got that partially. Yeah. So you've had lots of lots of experiences in your life. You've been blessed with a family, uh, two sweethearts, and um, so if you were to summarize your life, the message to your family, uh, what's the most important thing in life? What's the most important thing? Well, I think at this particular time, it's Jesus. <laughs> it's important. Jesus it's is important. It's important to me because I talk to him every day. Mm. 
And uh, I don't know if he answers me right, right away, but <laughs> he does in some ways. So he gives you peace and purpose. Oh, absolutely. That's, I, I wouldn't be doing this if, it were, if I hadn't prayed about it. Okay. The, uh, well, we all love you, and okay. we know that God uh, will work everything together for good. I'm, I'm certain of that. Thank you, Merle. You're welcome. Yeah, we got that.